a beam of mass M, 3.5 kilograms, and length L, which is 3.62 meters, rests on two supports as shown. Okay? The support on the left exerts an upward formal, normal force of normal L and L, and is located a distance L over 3 from the left end of the beam. The support on the right end exerts an upward force normal R, and is located at the right end of the beam. A box that has the same mass M as the beam is located, so 3.5 kilograms, is located a distance D from the end of the beam. Pop, pop. This will be 3.5 kilograms, okay? If the box were located at the right side of the beam, i.e. D equals L, how would normal force compare normal force left compared to normal force right, okay? So I'm going to edit this picture real quick. This box is now over here with the mass M, which is 3.5. Okay, so the way I would look at this, and first intuitively it feels like, oh, it's probably just going to be NR is bigger because, you know, it's got a box on it, maybe. And it might be right, I'm not sure. But it's a little bit more nuanced than that. So this is a problem that's worth going through a little bit more formally. So you're probably familiar with the idea that if you have a net force equals zero, that implies that acceleration equals zero. If you don't have any net external force, you're not going to have an acceleration. Well, a similar concept in rotation is exists where you have a um, the sum of all torques, the net torque is zero, then the, well, I'll put this as alpha, the angular acceleration equals zero. Basically, you're not going to have any rotation. Things are not going to be rotating if the net torques are zero. Well, they might be rotating, but they won't be changing their speeds of rotation. They will not be accelerating, so to speak. So we're going to use that concept right here. And we're going to look at the torques at this point, and we're going to look at the torques at that point. So I'm going to redraw this real quick until we have our beam kind of like so. Yeah, that's good enough. And we're going to have draw the forces. So this is going to be the L left beam. So we're going to have, I'm going to call this NR. Nope, move it over slightly. NR, there we go. With the force going up. And then we're going to have a force block going down. And then we're going to have a force um, due to the beam. This will be block. This will be beam going down. And then we also have a force beam going down on this side. And what this is doing is this is causing rotation. This will cause rotation this direction. Cause rotation that direction. This will cause rotation this direction. Now cause rotation that direction. And then we're also going to have rotation bum, 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 going the other direction. So redraw another picture, but from this side. Oh, another line. Eh, pretty good. We're going to have force beam going down this way. And then we're going to have uh, normal force left going up this way. Let's see, is that all for this one? Yes, and this is all we have for, this will be the pivot point at the right block, this will be the pivot point at the left block. And since neither of these points are turning, there's no rotation at either of these pivot points, it means all the torques at these points have to be equal. Now there are some specific things that I left out here. So one is, I left out NL here. The reason I did that is because its radius, its distance from the pivot point, is zero. Therefore, it's not going to contribute to the torque. Torque equals R cross F. So if R, the distance, uh, the, per, eh, the distance from the um, pivot point, if that is zero, then the whole part is zero, therefore the torque is zero. I also left off the mass of the block here and NR because those are both also both at the pivot point and therefore they won't, won't contribute. Okay, so now we're just going to set up our equations here. So as I mentioned, torque equals R cross F. All of these radius, radii, are going to be um, perpendicular to the force. So the radius is going to be this way. Force is going to be either up or down. 
And since cross product is the sine of theta, theta equals 90, this will all be r times f. Okay, so now we got the background out of the way. We're going to start solving. So I'm going to start at the left here. So we know that this distance here is L over 3. I'm going to assume that the, uh, since it's an evenly distributed homogeneous beam, the, its mass is going to be in the middle. So this is L over 3, so that's L over 6. So we have L over 6. So torque equals L over 6. That's the radius times the force. And the force, that's one third of the beam. So it'll be, I just call it mass over 6. Mass over, or mass over 3, because it's one third of the beam. Good call, good catch. Okay? Plus, I'm going to call down positive. Hmm. Do I call down positive? No. I call, eh, I'll just, it doesn't have to do with up or down, it has to do with clockwise or counterclockwise. So, next one along the lines will be this beam. This is going to be negative, whoop, because it's opposite direction uh, in pivoting. So, this one would be counterclockwise, that one would be clockwise. And we're going to say that this distance here is going to be, since this is whole thing is L, this is 2L over 3, so this will just be L over 3 distance, and then the mass will be 2M over 3. Oh, mass times gravity. There we go. Whoop, almost forgot. So force for the beam equals mass times gravity. Good catch. Good catch. Plus, now we have the force of the block, which will be It'll be a total distance of 2L over 3 away. And it'll be um, mass, the same M, M times gravity. Okay? Let me make sure we got the... Um, and that should be negative because it's, this, it's going the same direction as the beam. Yep. And then we're going to have a positive which will be the normal force, and that will be times um, 2 over 3, which is the distance, r times force. So these are various torque contributions. This is the beam left of pivot. This is beam right of pivot. This is... Hmm... This is block, and this is normal force. Okay, and then since there isn't any acceleration here, since it's in equilibrium, we're gonna say this equals zero. Okay, so now we're gonna put all the negatives on one side, making them positives, and then solve. So let's see here, we have N R times two thirds L. Forgot the L. Oop. I'm gonna. Yep. Need to be careful with those. So we have an L over, let's say, 18 times mass times gravity. Okay. That one doesn't have gravity because it's a. It's, a, it's already just given as a force. And then on the other side, we will have two over nine. LMG plus 2 over 3 LMG, okay? So it looks like we can cancel out all of our L's, which is nice. Cancel, 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 cancel. We can't cancel out the M's or the G's because this normal force doesn't have any. But we can go for the common denominator of 18. So this will be 12 over... 18 and R. That looks like a 2. I know it's so much math. So much math. I am sorry for that. Mass gravity equals 4. 4 over 18. Mass times gravity. Plus, all right, so this is 6. So we have to go 18, 12 over 18. Mass times gravity. Okay? Combining things, we get, this becomes 16, whoop, subtract off 1, 
that becomes 15. So we have 12 over 18 and R equals 15 over 18 mass times gravities. 18 to cancel and NR, whoop, yeah, I'm good at this. NR equals 15 over 12 mass times gravity. I guess we can reduce that once by dividing by 3. So NR equals 5 fourths or 1.25 mass times gravity. Or get mass as a constant. Okay, so now at this point we know what NR is. That was the tough one, so that's why we did it first. Now we're going to do the same thing with the left side. I think we had an equation for that. Nope, we just had a picture, which is kind of like an equation. So now we take this guy, we start at the left, work our way right. So we're going to assume that the normal force, that's at one-third, so that's two-thirds away. So we're still going to go with the general formula, torque equals R cross F, which in this case is going to be R times F. So this is, NL is two-thirds away, so it'll be two-thirds L times NL plus, no, minus, because it has to cancel out. There we go. Minus, it's opposite direction. And I know it doesn't really matter which way my minuses or pluses are, as long as it's within the same equation, it all stays consistent. So force of the beam, that's going to be L over 2 away, and that's going to be the full mass of the beam. So it's just going to be an M. Okay? And this, since there's no rotation, is going to equal zero. Okay? Okay. Okay. So now, bum, 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 we set them equal to each other. So two-thirds L and L equals L over 2M. The L's cancel, which kind of makes sense. 2 comes over, no, so this is solve for NL equals 4 thirds, oh, there should be a G, good call, good call, um, nope, 3 fourths, whoop, so 3 comes up there, 3 over 4 M G, okay, so, NR equals 5 fourths mg, NL equals 3 fourths mg, therefore, if you're going to compare these, 5 fourths greater than 3 fourths, it is by 1 half. Therefore, the normal force on the right will be bigger than the normal force on the left. And that kind of feels correct, because you see this, it's like, all right, we took this box, which is the same mass as the whole beam together, and we're just placing it straight on top of this pivot point. And that's going to be a significant amount of mass. And so intuitively, you might be like, well, that kind of makes sense. And you see all, saw all the work I had to do to kind of show that and figure that out. That's a lot of work, especially when you're only given maybe three or four minutes per problem. And that's easy to make a mistake while doing all that. If you have time, I'd recommend going through it formally. But if not, this might even be one of those that's worth kind of like, eh, feels, and then go with that. Okay, what is the value of D for which NR is zero? Okay, so now we're gonna, I'm going to erase all of this. I know, I, I feel bad because I, I did all this work. Now I'm just going to get rid of it. Kapow, gone. Now we're going to say, all right, this box is going to now be somewhere probably over here to make NR equal zero. So it basically means that all the torque is, this is balancing. So this could even just be gone. So the idea here is NR is providing no force up. And so I'm going to look at this as if that pivot wasn't even there. Because if, there's, if it's not providing any force, there's no real reason, not providing any normal force up, there's not any reason for it to be there. So we, I'm going to redraw this picture. Yeah, my drawing skills are terrible. Like this. So I'm going to assume the box is over here. And this is going to be distance D. And this is counterweighting it in just such a way 
that NR is zero. So we could put the block here, but it's not needed. Not needed at all because it's not providing its normal force. And that's kind of a key understanding which should simplify how we work through this problem. So purple, what is the value of D for which NR, that one over there, is zero? Okay, so we want to calculate this out. So we're going to say that, all right, if this is steady equilibrium, then all the torques will balance. So we have a torque here, so this will be force due to beam left. This will be force due to block. And this will do be force due to beam right. And I'm just looking at the middle of the beam. You can do that with a straight line. You can, um, there's a linear relationship for, if you break it down and you can look at it as individual parts and Basically, this part and this part will average that part. This part and that part will average that part, and you keep doing it, and you can basically just assume that all the mass is in the middle. Um, I'm not going to prove that. Um, it is provable, uh, but this is not worth it, and it's intuitively kind of makes sense. The balance point will be in the middle. Okay. If you take a stick and kind of bounce it on your finger, same concept. So here, then, we're going to start at the left and work our way right. So torque equals R cross F. And since in this case, the cross product is going to be the sign of 90 for everything, this will always be, I get rid of that, make that, there we go, will always be RF. Make a little arrow so show that. Kind of sort of related, not guaranteed. So for the beam on the left, we have a distance of, so this is, what color do I have? I'll do light blue. This distance here is L over 3, so we're going to, have to be at L over 6 for our radius. And then our mass is going to be mass over 3, since it's one-third of the um, distance of the entire beam, plus the block. So if that's the distance. I'm going to do a different distance here. I'm going to find distance, I'm going to say X, and really x in this case is just going to be um, L over 3 minus D. But it's easier for me to look at it instead of measuring it from the left side, it's easier for me to measure it from the right side. So I'll have to keep that in mind, but I'm just going to call that x. It's just simpler, less to write, and more intuitively makes sense. And the mass of the block is mass m, the mass of the entire beam. Now we're going to subtract off from that the um, this one, so this is this whole distance here is two thirds L, and so half of that would be L over three, and then the mass will be two thirds of the total mass because it's two thirds of the entire beam, and then since there's no rotation, there's no right, there's no rotation, which also implies that there's no acceleration in the rotating angular acceleration. There's no angular acceleration equals zero. Rearrange things slightly, so we have xm plus lm over 18, looks like we're going to go for 18 again, equals 2lm over 9. All right, we're going to go for the common denominator of 18, 18xm over, wait a sec, why do I have an xm? Oh, right, because that's the block. Equals over 18 plus lm over 18 equals 4lm over 18. Move this over to that side. Hup. Contrast, one, cancel, three. So then we have 18xm equals, cancel the 18s that are left, 3lm, cancel the m's, 18x equals 3L, X equals 3L over 18, which equals L over 6. Hmm, maybe. Interesting. So, if we say that X equals L over 3 minus D, X equals L over 3 minus D, we're arranging this, we have D equals L over 3 minus X, which is L over 3 minus L over 6, which does seem awfully convenient for me. 
which is L over 6, which is bum, 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 3.62 over 6. 3.62 over 6, which is, pull up the calculator on clear, 3.62 over 6, we get 0 0.603, 0 0.603, bum, 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 and I'm going to say that's the correct answer. So 0 0.603. The problem with these, the challenge with these sort of problems is it's hard to get an intuitive sense what's going on. So this is saying that it's going to be right in the middle there, which might be true. I don't know. Not, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. So backtrack to kind of look what we did here. The entire concept that this problem was trying to illustrate or having us illustrate by solving the problem was if you have something that's steady with no rotation, if it's not rotating at all, then the angular acceleration is zero. No angular acceleration implies that the net torques equal zero. And one way to write that is the sum of all torques about a given point will equal zero. So you can pick any point, write all the torques about it, and then sum it up to zero, and that will give you, um, that you can use that then to solve for some of these normal forces. And that's just kind of the idea that we found here where we set torques on one side equal to torques on the other side. And instead of torques being really up or down, so to speak, torques are thought of in terms of clockwise or counterclockwise. Actually, torque equals R cross F, so you have maybe like an X component here, a Y value here, and then you're going to get a Z value for the actual torque. It's, it creates, an, torques are looked at in the third, in a third dimension that's independent of the two vectors that are being cross product, the radius and the force. It's easier to think of it in terms of clockwise or counterclockwise. It's just the mathematical representation of it. So that was the idea of what we did here. Hope that helped. I will see you next time.